Hello, dear friend. This is your Humphreys with a 10 minute message from the Bible. I'm speaking to you on a series of sermons, little short messages on prayer. The value of prayer. <coughs> it is so vital. Prayer is like food to the body. Without eating, you won't live long. Prayer is like water. If you quit drinking water, you'll die. You must learn to pray, dear Christian. And to pray, and the more you pray, the more you'll become a stronger Christian. It's the one way to gain strength with God. And that's through prayer. Prayer and the Bible go together. When you pray, you need to read the Bible. You need to set aside a time. Get with the Lord, open the Bible, and read a few verses, and then spend some time in prayer. Not just two or three minutes, but spend all the time that you possibly can in prayer. And you do that, you've got to set aside a time and to do it. In the name of the Lord, this little message is going out all over the world. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to speak to you on the fact of some things that, that will happen when we pray. Really pray and really call on God. And the one will help us bear our trials and troubles. And we'll get through them and become stronger instead of weaker. And we find that's true over in First Peter, the fifth chapter, and verse 7. It says, Cast all your care upon the Lord, for He cares for you. Cast your care on Him. Pray. Say, Lord, here's my problem. I'm facing my broken heart. I'm bringing it to you. I'm going to bring it to you, and I'm going to cast it on you. And that means I'm not going to worry about it because I'm giving it to you. And then quit worrying about it, whatever it is. And leave it with God and let Him work, and He'll bring it out. And he'll bring you through. The hand of the Lord is with you. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Oh, if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave them there. So we learn to pray and we learn to take our trou troubles to the Lord. And then when we pray in uh, First uh, John, the 15th chapter, Jesus said in verse 4, Abide in me and I'll abide in you. As the branch cannot bear forth fruit except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. Now to abide in Jesus means you talk to him. The more you pray, the more you abide in Jesus. He said, abide in me and my words abide in you. When you abide in him, you pray. And his word abide in you, you read his word. Read just a few verses when you're praying. Find time. Take time. You may have to get up a little early in the morning to do it, but do it. Find time somewhere to pray, and then pray with pray all the day. Pray all the time that you can in short prayers, calling on God. But there must be a time set aside when you pray some diligent prayer. More than any few minutes, but several, maybe like 30 minutes in prayer. Seeking God's way and God's will. Abide in Him. Abide in Him. Prayer is so important. Prayer is so important. Oh, praise God. Dr. U, uh, uh, Gregory Frizzell wrote a book on how to develop a prayer life. Very good book. In it he says he was called to preach. He knew the Lord had called him. And he went one day out in his backyard, one evening late in the evening, one night really, he said. He got out on his knees and prayed under the stars of heaven, and he prayed for God's mercy. That he, well, he felt God called him to preach. Please help me know what to do. And he said he got up and he opened his Bible and he read in Second Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 6, who has made, Jesus has made us to be ministers of the gospel. Ministers of the gospel. Not of the, not of the letter, but of the spirit of life. The Holy Spirit. And so he knew that he had been called to preach. And he knew and felt that this was a word God has given him. And then he gave him a word over in John where he told him again that he was to, to abide in him. If you abide in me, if you abide in me, you are the vine, I'm the branch. I'm the vine, you're the branches, said Jesus. He that abides in me and I in him the same will bring forth much fruit. Without me you can do nothing. And so Dr. Brazell said he knew and learned that he could do nothing without Christ. But with him he could do all things. He could do all things. Amen. Over in Philippians in the fourth chapter, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Ah, praise God. That meant a lot to me when I surrendered to preach. 
and I went out to preach because I remember that scripture I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me I had no college education I only had a high school education and praise God I had no experience in preaching but I felt a call to God, of God to preach and I thought and prayed oh and I prayed for this scripture I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and I talked to him and talked to him and found a way and God has blessed me ever since through the years all through the years over in the book of, his, of Jeremiah 33 3 it says I the Lord call upon me saith the Lord and I will answer you as a good promise of God call upon the Lord and he'll answer Jeremiah 33 3 and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know God will do it. He'll show you great and mighty things that you did not know about. If you just call on Him and pray to Him and call Him and ask Him to help you find a way to know the truth. Oh, prayer. Prayer will bring victories to your life. Prayer will give you strength to bear your burdens. Prayer will give you power over the enemy. Power. Oh, God. Prayer, prayer will help you forgive those who mistreat you. Prayer will help you to love people that you that don't love you. Prayer will help you to pray and hear the voice of God. Prayer will help you find joy and peace in every hour of your life. Even in time of trouble, the Lord will give you peace in your prayer life. Learn to pray, dear God. Spend, oh, God, help us to learn to pray. And to spend time in prayer because it is the way of life. A word to you that are members of churches. We need to pray for revival in the church through by the power of the power of the Spirit of God. The early church in the New Testament days were people who spent much time in prayer. They did not have the technology we have today, but they had something better than technology. They had the power of God because they prayed and they spent time in prayer. It seems sometimes that Many of our churches spend more time in programs, 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 which are good, but they must not leave off prayer, old-fashioned, old-time, Holy Spirit anointed prayer. We need prayer meetings in our churches. We need prayer meetings in our home. You need a prayer meeting in your life daily. As you pray, you grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Prayer is a wonderful thing. Prayer. People get saved when you pray for them. By Matthew 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it will be open. And I prayed, and I sought, and I knocked at the door. I prayed for my little great-granddaughter that she would open her heart to Jesus. A few weeks ago, I had the privilege of meeting with her, talking to her, and she prayed with me and asked Jesus to come into her heart as the Lord of her life. And she said, I'm going to try to find a church. Hallelujah. God answers prayer. God answers prayer. God works miracles through prayer. Some, some years ago, uh, and I, in fact it was back in 1983, uh, a person in a, a place called Tyra, Egypt, was saved. And he came out of Tyra, and Tyra was a, was a, a town of about 40,000 people, different villages around, but uh, totaling about 40,000 people. None of them had ever heard the gospel. But he heard it through a missionary and was saved. He came to the United States and he spent years. And he, spent, uh, he went to the university and the seminary and he spent then uh, learning the English language. And then he spent when he said, I'm going back. But he said, before I do, I want to translate the Bible. And he started with the New Testament, translating the Bible into the Tyra language. There had been no, until that time, no Bible had ever been printed in their language. And through the years, he worked and worked, and finally, finally, it, it happened. He got it translated, and he went back to Tyra, and he gave out all hundreds, and the, uh, organizations furnished him with hundreds and thousands of Bibles. And now a whole town of Tyre, many of them, many of them, many of them are Christians. The Bible says, I mean, the fact is that, that the two men, Tom and Henry, 
began praying, praying back in 1983 when, he, when his man was saved, that, that, that uh, there would be a work of God in his life. And then, back uh, several years later, and uh, oh, it was up the way about 1940s, that two other uh, people prayed. Their name was Anthony and uh, Gordon, and they were praying that God would, they met this man, they said, we're praying, Lord, together, that somehow he'll be able to get the Bible translated into his people's language. And they prayed and they prayed. And in 2007, he went back to Tyra with all those Bibles and and gave Bibles to 40,000 people in their own language. Many of them have been saved. That's a miracle. But it started in prayer. And it continued in prayer because four people were praying. Four people kept praying. For we need to recognize that God hears prayer. And God said, I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Lord, he'll bless your life, dear friend. Whatever your problem is, not too big for God. He's going to answer it. He's going to show you saying, saying some things that you've never seen. And you're going to come out with song because you belong to God and you found the answer. But it'll come when you pray. And you're going to learn to pray and spend time in prayer. Keep on keeping on. Don't give up. Spend time in prayer. Make time. It won't come easy, but it'll come right, and God will bless you. May the Lord bless you. May He keep you close to Him. Sweet hour of prayer. Oh, sweet hour of prayer. Amen. I praise God that we shall call on the name of the Lord. Learn to pray, dear friend, and you're going to learn some things that will happen to you when you pray. God bless you. I will continue these series of messages on prayer. Amen. Pray this prayer with me if you're not sure you're a Christian. Say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again. And I believe he's coming back. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Help me live for you as the Lord of my life. Amen. Find you a good church and worship with God's people and learn to pray. Amen and amen.